please stand as we get to worship God this morning. We serve a great God, amen. He's so amazing and so good to us. Yes. Yeah. I will sing of your goodness. I will sing of your love. Though the seasons come quickly, you'll always be in love. Though the night may get darker, though the waiting seems long, you have always been faithful to remind me of your love. Cause you are good in the morning I'll sing. for a new day. God, we're in your house today. This is the Father's house. And Father, you are here and you are the one we worship. You're the one we praise. So Lord, for everybody here on site, for everybody joining online, we give you glorious praise. We were created by love and for love. So we say we love you. We honor you. We worship you and we we recognize that we need a savior. We need help. We need hope. And you are it. Jesus, you are our blessed hope. In the name of Jesus, we all say amen. amen. Hey, just turn around and say hi to somebody. Keep standing. We're going to keep worshiping. But just greet the family. To the garden, 
to the moment I heard your voice take me back to communion. Lead me back to the moment I saw your face. And it was all so simple. It was easy to the privilege of receiving Holy Communion together. You do not need to be a member of this church. We have guests here today. Family, you're welcome. At home, I'd love if you run to the kitchen and get some juice or some water even, and just some crackers so you can participate with us. We would love that. The Father loves when his kids get together around the table. And he wants us to remember what he did for us. The lyrics of this song we just sang said, the dead things come back to living. Aren't you glad that Jesus made the dead things in your life come back to life? Because of the cross, because of the cross, the cross, Father, we, we remember you, we remember you. We remember you, Lord. We remember you, Jesus. Thank you. We don't do this out of rote. We don't do this because it just happens to be that Sunday. We do this because we really want to remember Jesus, remember what he did for us. One of the things the Bible instructs us in is that when we come to the communion table, to make sure that we have forgiven everybody, it's important that we have forgiven everyone who's ever hurt us, offended us. Would you just pause for a moment and just close your eyes? Just pause for a minute and, and make sure that your heart is clear of any unforgiveness, of any offense, so that we can partake of his body and his blood with a clear heart. Yes, Lord.
could hold up the symbol of his broken body, just hold this up. Would you say this after me? Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for the gift of your son. By the stripes that fell on his back, my body is healed from the crown of my head to the very soles of my feet. Every cell, every organ, every function of my body is healed, restored, and renewed. In Jesus' name, I believe and I receive. Let's partake of the body. Amen. Please hold up the cup. Let's pray this prayer together. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for your precious blood. Come on, y'all need to say it out loud. This is not, what we, you, I want you to use your outside voice because this is a declaration of what we believe. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for your blood. Your sin-free, disease-free life is in your blood. And your shed blood has removed every sin from my life. I am forgiven and made completely righteous. Today I celebrate and partake of the inheritance of the righteous. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for loving me. I remember you. Let's partake of the blood. Amen. Amen. Let's just praise him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. thank the Lord. We give you praise, God. You're so good. You're so good to us. We worship you, Master. We thank you, Lord, that the dead things are coming back to life. The things that are impossible to man are possible with you, God. Relationships, finances, healing, God, you are bringing the dead things to life. In Jesus' name, we all say amen. amen. Hey, turn around. High five somebody, air hug somebody, whatever you want to do. Blessings to you.
Well, good morning. I'm very loud this morning. Amen. Man, I can just feel the, the peaceful presence of God in here this morning. Well, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Christian. My wife and I are the youth and young adults pastors here at the Father's House. And uh, there might be a few people here. I think there might be a couple of, uh, uh, of people who have been here for the very first time. And so if that's true, we want to just welcome you and say thank you for being with us here today. And so if you're here present at the Father's House, we've got a Connect card just down in the seat in front of you, just below. If you'll fill that out and just take that out to the Welcome Center, we would love to just keep a record of the fact that you were here today. Uh, no strings attached, I promise. We just want to say thanks. And for those of you watching online, maybe this is the first time you've ever uh, you know, heard of us or you've, this is the first time you're watching, just write in the comments, I am new. Just all in caps, we've got someone that'll reach out to you and, and send you a, there's a link there that they can, uh, they'll send you, you can click on that to fill out a, a connect card online. Now, I have a, a couple of announcements that I want to give to you today. The first one is tomorrow night at seven o'clock, we have Fight Club, which is our men's go group uh, that deals with uh, sexual addiction and pornography addiction. And I can tell you our first meeting was fantastic. It was a really great uh, meeting and we've already seen healing and restoration happen. And so Come on, Jesus, right? So if, uh, if you're a man and you need help in this area, there's nothing to be ashamed of or embarrassed about. You can come here tomorrow night at 7 p.m. or you can join via Zoom. And uh, if you want to reach out to me for further details on how that all works and how that goes, just reach out to me. Now, this Friday night, for all my young adults, we have... Uh, TFHYA, and that's going to be here at Friday night at 7, and uh, we'll be here, and we do this once a month on the ev every first Friday at 7 p.m., so come and hang out with uh, my wife and I. It's going to be a lot of fun. Now, for all my youth, we've got first Saturday coming up this weekend, and this one is called Take a Hike. Take a hike. Yep, take a hike. I'm tired of you. No, I'm just kidding. Ah. We're going to go outside and we are going to enjoy the great outdoors. We are going to go to uh, the park over here. It's Terrace Oak Park, just right down here on Burnsville Center. And uh, we're going to do that from 10 to 11.30 a.m. And we're just going to be able to enjoy the great outdoors so we hopefully don't have to wear masks and we can social distance and all that good stuff. And so uh, really quick, we have a video for you guys to watch if you would uh, take a look. Today, we are highlighting our serve teams. This is Serve Team Sunday. And here at the Father's House, we have quite a few serve teams. Right now, our ushers are coming down the line to pass out these cards. This card, we are asking, if you are not currently on a serve team, if you would please fill this card out and let us know where it is that you want to get involved. Now that we are... Coming back and, and we have two services and we have things going on, we need help. We need more people. We are here to serve the church and build the kingdom. Amen. And so I can tell you, Dave Privet told me that uh, he could use like eight guys during our security for both services. Uh, we've got uh, the worship team. We could use a whole other set of, of worship team, uh, you know, I know we need two piano players and uh, a whole set of singers and everything. So there's plenty of places for you to get involved. And so if you're not currently on a serve team, we're asking that you do this. And you're asking, well, why, why, why do we serve? Why do we do this? Well, so we have the, the meeting at the temple, right? We get filled up at the temple and we have our go groups, right? Who's in a go group? Who, who, who's in a, in a go group? 
few people? Okay, great. So here at the church and at your go group, that is you receiving, getting fed, right? You're, you're taking it all in. Now, what happens if you never exercise if, and you eat too much? You get fat, right? We don't want to be spiritually fat because we want to exercise and use the things that God has given us and we want to serve. We want to give out, we want to serve the church and build the kingdom. And so if you are taking and taking and taking, we need you to start pouring, 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 because there are people who need your gifts, your talents, your abilities, because God made you different and unique than anybody else on the entire planet. So we need you. Now, as you're filling that out, I've got great news. It's giving time. All right. Man, giving time is always fun for me because when my life is difficult, this is where I can find joy. Because when my bank account is negative and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to just put something in the offering. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it out. God is always faithful to, to get me out of whatever situation I created, right? We, I, I, I know I'm not talking to any people that have never been negative in their account, right? I know, I, I know I've been there. I've, I've made mistakes. I forgot about a bill or I, I bought something maybe I shouldn't have or whatever. And so now I'm struggling. We've done it. We, we're human. We make mistakes. But God is faithful. God is good. So when we still show our faithfulness in our tithe, even if we're lacking because of our own mistakes or maybe just because life happened and unfortunately life sucks sometimes, right? God is faithful to show up and turn every situation around for our good. It says that, that God turns all things good for those who are called according to his purpose. I'm looking at all the people called to his purpose. So if you're in a place where maybe the, the COVID has, has been getting you because you lost your job or, or maybe, maybe you're just really low in finances because things are slow at your job or maybe the business that you have is slow, I wanna encourage you this morning. Just because it looks one way doesn't mean it's gonna be that way because God is faithful to those who are willing to do what he's asked to do. So as you're watching online, we have t tons of different ways that you can give. For those of you that are here, they're offering envelopes uh, under the seat in front of you. You can grab one of those. Our usher will be by to gather those serve team cards and your offering this morning. And I just wanna pray a prayer of blessing over you. Father, we thank you, God, for today. Lord, we thank you, God, that you are a good God who shows up whenever we need you. And Lord, if there's a situation that we created or if it's something that's even out of our hands and we're lacking, God, we know that you are one to come and bring it pressed down, shaken together and running over. You fill our storehouses, God. And Lord, we thank you, God, that there is nothing that you can't do. We thank you, you turn all situations good for us because we are faithful to your word. So Father, I thank you that every person who gives today, whether it be online or here, Lord, we thank you that you are bringing a supernatural blessing and outpour in their finances. God, I thank you that they're gonna be better on the other side of this pandemic than they did going in. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Or we can put our hands together like this. Open. Yes. We waited for this day. We're gathered in your name. Your glory like a fire, awakening desires to burn our hearts with truth. Yes, because you're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floods. 
louder than that. Let's hear it. Amen. Yeah. Amen. High five somebody else and you may be seated. Wow, that is exciting stuff. Man, open up the heavens. Amen. Praise God. It's good to see you today. As opposed to, you know, not seeing you and the alternative that goes with that. So if you had a tough week, You've come to the right place. Amen. If you've had a great week, you've come to the right place. Amen. Amen? Amen? We're here to encourage one another, and I'm here to encourage you. And for those that are watching, we're glad that you're here today. Thank you for being a part of us, our online friends. And maybe there's some haters that are online. I mean, not that there would be, but maybe there are. Right. It's an exciting time to be alive. We've been talking about the rapture, the rapture of the church. This is the second part to that. And next week, I'll be talking again about the end times or what time it is. And so I'm just honored that our young people are here today. Yeah. Thanks for being here today. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to be looking in Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians, if you'd like to turn there, or you can just follow along as we look at Scripture as it pertains to this incredible thing called the rapture of the church. 
A lot of people don't preach this anymore because they're afraid. And I, I don't know what that's all about. But it's the word of God. This is a doctrine. This is not an allegory. Jesus talked about his return. He talked about, uh, and a lot of times people interchange the second coming with the rapture. So we're going to be looking at that. And you need to know this. You, it says encourage one another with this information. So for the believer, this is an encouragement. For the unbeliever, this is a warning. It's a time to be warned that we need to be ready to know this Jesus. We need to be ready when he comes. We'll be talking about that next week. But let's look at 1 Thessalonians there. And are you comfortable? Okay, good. I'm not going to let you sleep, but I want you to be comfortable. Okay? So we're looking at the word of God today, 1 Thessalonians And it says this, uh, chapter 4, verse 13, let's begin. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep. That's people that have died. Okay? So Paul is addressing the Thessalonians to say, I want you to be aware of what's going on about this time and about people that die in Christ. Okay? So, I mean, not that you're planning to die, But if you happen to die, this is what our position needs to be. Okay, he goes on, that have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as those who have no hope. I've been to funerals, I've conducted funerals where there is no hope. The word talks about the rapture as the blessed hope. It's the blessed hope because Jesus was talking about it. He's coming back. And it's an exciting time. There's two phases of that. There is the rapture and then the second coming. The rapture, we meet him in the air. We're going to be reading that here in a minute. Verse 14, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring him, bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will be by no means precede those who are asleep. Verse 16, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven. This is Jesus, the same Jesus that died on the cross, the same Jesus that walked on water. This is the same Jesus. And it says, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, some Some versions say with the voice of a trumpet. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up. That's where we get the term rapture. Okay. Rapture or snatch quickly. Did your mom or dad ever snatch you quickly when you were a kid? Never happened to me, but because I was very docile and just very obedient child. And shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So we're talking about clouds. We're talking about meeting him in the air. So I need you to understand what that's saying. We're going to where he is, okay? He's coming for us, for the church. The second coming, he's coming with the church. He's coming with you. Let's go to that next scripture in Corinthians Are you with me so far? All right, here we go. Behold, I tell you a mystery. Who likes mysteries? There's one, two, three, four. Yeah, we like mysteries. This particular mystery is dealing with the fact that can, it, it can only be revealed by the one who initiated it. So God, this is a mystery that God will reveal to us. And he revealed it. He didn't reveal it in the Old Testament, but he revealed it in the New Testament. And 
Jesus talked about it. So the mystery is, is what I'm talking about with the rapture and with the second coming. It's a mystery because it's not normal. How many can see yourself not normal? Those who did not raise your hand know that the people that are sitting with you think you should have raised your hand right there. <laughs> this is not normal. Supernatural things are not to be understood by the logic of the human mind. My grandfather was a raging alcoholic. He liked to drink and fight. He was known in the community as that guy. They talked about him at one particular time. Him and a friend, it was just like you see in the movies, him and a friend cleaned out a bar. My, my grandfather was 6'4". They cleaned this bar out. They got drunk and they got in a fight. They cleaned the bar out and he poured blood from his boot. This is what he liked to do. And then one day, Jesus came into his heart. He went to a... Uh, tent revival, took a $27 bar bet from his buddies. They said, you won't go down and disrupt a tent revival. He goes, I sure will. So he waited. It was $27, which was a lot of money in those days. He took their money and he slipped in the back of the tent as much as a six foot four guy can slip anywhere. And the way he told it was this way. All I remember was walking forward. And he walked forward and he accepted Jesus Christ and it changed the destiny of our family. That's supernatural. Yeah. There was no re rehab involved in that. God changed his life, changed his heart, changed his mind. That's supernatural. That's as supernatural as any miracle you could explain. Because people that knew him couldn't believe the fact that this guy was the same guy. This is a guy we locked up for all these years. He had a gold card with the jailer. The usual, Mr. Ramsey, you're in cell three tonight. But God came in, changed his life. That's supernatural. That's what we're talking about here. Verse, but we shall be changed. Verse 52, in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. So this rapture that we're talking about will happen quickly. In fact, the twinkling of an eye is a quarter of a second. So as fast as you can blink your eye, it's going to be faster than that. You're going to blink your eye and it's done. It will be spontaneous to all believers twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed verse 53 for this corruptible must be an uh on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality father thank you for this day thank you for your word god thank you for your church encourage your church with these words today God, encourage those that are listening, those that have an ear, let them hear what your word says. Thank you, Father, for this moment. We give you careful praise in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. The rapture. What is the rapture? Let me try to explain it if I can. The rapture, as it's, as it's described in the Bible, is a word from the Latin, rapturo, which is in the Latin Bible. If you have a Latin Bible, it's in that Bible. People say that rapture is not in the Bible, but that's not necessarily true. It is in the Latin Bible. And then the catching away that we read about right there, or the snatching away suddenly, is the term harpazo, harpazo. Uh, in the Greek. And so that is that, that is that catching away. It's a sudden thing. Now, you need to know that this is a doctrine. This is not um, an allegory. This isn't a story that, that Paul wanted to talk about or Jesus wanted to talk about. He wanted us to know that in this moment, in this time, that people need to know that he's coming back. 
Jesus is coming back. In the time, in the, you need to know it's not the end of the world, by the way. It's the end of the age. There's a, there's a big difference. And as we look at this, we see, let's look at that chart for a moment, can we? And I'll give you kind of an understanding. And there's a lot to this. There's no way that in two or three messages you can catch a hold of this. But I want you to go back and I want you to get the scriptures from two weeks ago. And so that you could study it out for yourself. We believe that we're right here. And this, this is my opinion. I believe that we're right here. I told you not to call me here. This is the... Never mind me. Um, are you okay? Are you okay, Rachel? Okay. All right. Don't throw things. Okay. So here we are at the rapture of the church. And that begins... This is a period of time that God set up. We happen to be in that season now. It says you'll not know the day or the hour, but you're going to know the season. Why are you going to know the season? You're going to know the season because of the things that are going on. The Bible says that it's going to be like birth pangs. Guys, it's hard for us to catch that, right? Except for when your, your wife grabbed you by the throat right. when you were trying to say push. Right. <laughs> but for you ladies that know about the birth you know what that's like it, it's birth pangs before the birth and he said it's going to be like that the earth is going to be like that now understand what i'm saying and don't hear what i'm not saying this is an encouragement to the church this is an encouragement to you that are a believer this was paul talked about this so that the people would be ready and not to uh you need to live your life. You need to buy, and, you, and you, if you're going to buy a house, buy a house. If you're going to have kids, have kids. This is not a time to be afraid. And by the way, if you're watching too much TV or too much news, turn it off. Get familiar with the book. Get familiar with the Word of God because it will change you. It will cause faith to rise up in you so that you are unshakable in this moment. This is an exciting time. Now, for the unbeliever, this is a terrifying time. It's a terrifying time because once the rapture happens, it moves to the very next time frame of a seven-year period called the tribulation. The tribulation. And it's a fearful time. It's the worst that this earth has ever experienced. In fact, Jesus goes on to say, unless the days were shortened, no one would survive. I hear people say, well, we're going to be mid-trip or they're going to be post-trib. Um, if you really read about the tribulation, it's a horrific time. Yeah. And it's, Jesus said, I'll be talking about this next week. Jesus said it's going to be like the days of Noah and, and Lot. People would be eating and drinking and, and uh, given in marriage, just a merry time. And, and even in this moment right now, because I, I believe it's the next event that will happen for the church prophetically. But we don't know. We know the season. We don't know the time. Because I've been around, you know, the church. Jesus was supposed to come back in 1988. This is 2020, right? I want to make sure I haven't lost a decade or two. But yeah, they were selling books like crazy. And man, do I wish I'd have got in on that. Or what would Jesus do, bracelets? Are you kidding me? I'd fa finance our next building. Just saying. Oh, come on, lighten up. What is your deal? So here's the thing. This is an exciting time for the church, and this is a time for us to, again, double down and, and pray for our lost loved ones. Pray for people that don't know Jesus, but you need to live your life. He told the Thessalonians this, Paul did, so that they would be prepared because we don't have the promise of tomorrow anyway, right? Some people think they do, 
but you don't. Just read the obituaries. Death has no... Death is no respecter of persons. Children, infants, people who have had a hard time, people that are wealthy, billionaires, that if they could buy another day, they would do it. That's why this message is so pertinent and so real right now. COVID has shown us that things can change overnight. All the fear involved, all the, all the stuff that goes with it. I heard just recently that it's affected 188 countries. So it's not like any other time before. It's not like even World War II, which there were some countries that were completely unscathed by World War II, by, by the effects of that. But this time, just for an example, as I, I'm going to move on here, but just for an example, the pale rider will kill one-fourth of the planet. Right now, if the rapture happened, tomorrow would, would engage in this seven-year period, which at some point, the pale rider will come in and kill one-fourth of the planet. That's two billion people. Just to give you an idea... We are freaking out over 500,000 people dying, okay? Worldwide. Let me also give you another number. That when the Spanish flu hit us in 1800s, between 60 and 80 million people died. Listen to the difference in the numbers. He will come and he will destroy one-fourth of the planet. It's again why I don't believe that there's a post-trib because it says it's going to be like the days of Lot and Noah. So I don't think you're going to be building and planting with people dying like that. And then another third dies. And then, and then there is, a, there is a, a meteor that hits us. And then all of the plant, all of the fish and and water, wildlife dies. This is a time unlike any other time that our planet has ever witnessed. And you don't want to be here for that. So it's a very serious thing. But on the same token, I grew up with people that were just kind of waiting for that to happen. They weren't living. They were just kind of, Jesus is coming. So we just scare the hell out of people. And that was it. That's not very encouraging. Right? And he said, encourage one another with this. Encourage one another. So I don't see encouragement with people that, hey, we're going through the tribulation. Yeah! I don't think so. We can encourage one another with the rapture. That's what he's talking about, and that's what I believe. That's my opinion. And so I won't argue with you about this. This is just, I'm just sharing from my heart. And if you want to, if you have a rebuttal, please see the Rev. (laughs) So number one, for, for you to understand this, he says he's going to meet you in the air and that this rapture is personal. This is a personal thing between Jesus and his church or his bride, as he calls the church. So it's personal. And then the second coming, so we got the rapture, which I believe is the first phase. And then we have the second coming, which is at the end of the tribulation, okay? And that is going to be a completely public event. He touches down on the Mount of Olives. Everyone will see him. Everyone. And he's not going to come back in that situation as... 
Hey, what's happening? Peace. I'm on a white horse and just love you guys. Hey, like what you did with your hair. It's beautiful. Wow. It's beautiful. No, it says he's coming back on a white horse. His hair is white. His eyes are bright red. He's coming at, as a judge. This planet will be judged and his wrath will be poured out upon the earth. And that moment is a fearful time. That's why we don't want to be here. You're saying, well, you're an escapist? Absolutely I am. Because Jesus said, pray. Let's read that. Let's read that, 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 uh, that next scripture. This is, what, this is our position. Please stand by. <laughs> so here we are. Luke 21, 36, it says this. Watch therefore... And pray always, this is Jesus talking, that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand, bef to stand before the Son of Man. Amen. So Jesus is talking and he's saying there is an escape. Pray that you escape this. Yes. So how do you do that? Well, you have Jesus in your heart. Young people, you have Jesus in your heart. You believe that he died and rose again and he's coming back for us. He's your savior. He's our savior. <clears throat> um, let's watch a video real quick here. Eyewitness accounts from around the world report that at approximately 5.50 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, individuals from every country, including many children, were taken up into the sky. The exact cause of this phenomenon is still unclear, and political leaders have joined with experts in the fields of science and technology in a bid to identify the cause of the disappearances, the disappearances, the disappearances, the disappearances, the disappearances, the disappearances, the disappearances. Safe now. Following these horrific events, there have been a multitude of natural disasters, including earthquakes. I need to know what happened to my family. Was it an alien invasion or what? What is going on? They're saying on the news. This is not an alien invasion. This is an act of God. From the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. You will see them again, if you believe. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. You don't want to be here. You don't want to be here when tribulation starts. That's why this is a serious message. That's why Paul shared it. That's why Jesus shared it. This is, this is not a Disneyland deal or a Disney. This is not some allegory. This is what's going to happen. God's timetable started a long time ago. We happen to be the generation that are here now. Not because we're better than any other generation. It's just it's God's time clock. So we've been talking about the rapture. It is a serious business. I'm going to go over just briefly what um, I taught a couple of weeks ago. The point to this moment is, are we ready? 
Are we ready to meet him? That was what Paul was trying to get across to the Thessalonians. Spend some time with this. Don't let this be a one and done scenario. Please take some time to study this and go over the scriptures that I've given so that you can study it out for yourself. The rapture of the church. The Bible consists of between 20 and 30 percent prophetic um, items that are all through scripture. So 20 to 30 percent of the Bible is prophetic, is prophesied things. Old Testament proved that Jesus would come. Jesus came hundreds of years before he came. It was prophesied that he would come. So we see that. He's come in the air for his church at any moment. We believe that, the return of the Lord. That's the first stage. It's called the rapture of the church because he will catch away his people and take them unto himself. We talked about the mystery a little bit ago. First, this is 1 Thessalonians 4 and 13 through 18 is the scripture I've been using. Number one, the Lord's coming will be personal. We talked about that. When he comes, the second coming of the Lord will be sudden and dramatic. It will be sudden. It's going to happen quickly. We'll be talking about the ten virgins next week and how that applies to the church and what's going on with the church right now. There's a parallel of apostasy that's happening in the church as well as the world. If you you felt it, I know that you see it, but there is a direct correlation between the Antichrist and him coming against the word, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus is the word, the, the Bible tells us. And so the Antichrist is coming against the word, Jesus. And so that's what we're witnessing. We're witnessing it worldwide. We're witnessing things that we've never witnessed before. There are more people that were martyred last year for the cause of Christ than ever before in history. When he comes, the dead in Christ will rise first. We believe that with all of our hearts. And again, it's supernatural. I don't, I don't know how this is all going to happen. But then again, I don't know how trees are made. And when I turn that light switch on, I, I don't walk up to it and go, <laughs> I wonder how that works. Wow! Look at that! Is anybody else seeing that? No, there's just some things that it just happens. That's the way this is with God. You believe in God or you don't believe in God. And if you're if if that belief system is hidden from you, God help you. We are living in a time of doubt and fear. People don't believe anything. Advertisers have helped with that. Have you ever bought something online and it just looks like it's awesome? And then it, they deliver it in like a little box. And in the picture, it was the size of your car. You, with excitement, you undo the box and it says assembly required. But in your particular box... There's no instructions. Yeah, you know, we've been lied to. We've been lied to by governments, by systems, by people. And so doubt and fear grip this nation and grip the world. God is saying, trust me. Will you trust me? Will you give your life to me? Let me take your life. Yeah, let's give the Lord praise. Can we do that? And that's when it changes for all of us. 
When we believe him is when it works. Number four, every living Christian will be changed and caught up. No one will be left. This means that the Lord, when the Lord comes, there will be millions of Christians on earth who will never die. They will be clothed with immortality, and all this will happen in the twinkling of an eye. They will suddenly disappear. Like Enoch, if you want to check that out, Hebrews 11, 5, or Elijah, uh, 2 Kings 2, 1. These, these guys never died. They didn't die. The, the Bible says about Enoch, he was not, for God took him. I don't understand that. But it happened. Number five, then will follow a time of glorious reunion for saints. It's going to be a great time. You're going to see people... You're going to see relatives that knew that that came to the knowledge of Jesus that you never met before. Uh, some people that you do know, you're going to see them again. You're going to embrace. You're going to have a great time. No more taxes. Come on, Jesus. Amen. No more aches or pains. You can hit that dessert bar as much as you want and not gain a pound. Thank you, Jesus. It's going to be a glorious time. It's going to be a wonderful time. Number six, above all, we shall meet the Lord himself. All that's been talked about, what a meeting this will be. What, what a great joy we will experience as, as we anticipate our loved ones and friends and just meeting them and seeing them, glorified bodies. The enemy is trying to discourage you and depress you. The word says he, his business is to kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to destroy you because you were made in the image of God. You were one of God's own. We are called the sons of God, the sons and daughters of God. We're in his family. So it would stand to reason that anything God likes, the enemy hates. So don't, don't think it's strange when stuff happens. But that's why we're in that's why we're here today to encourage one another. Come on. Come on, let's go a little further. Come on, get up from that place. Come on, you can be healed. Come on, we believe this stuff. I remember some time ago listening to Smith Wigglesworth in a rather reading what he said about Unbelief. He said, I would rather die believing God than to live a life of unbelief. Have you ever been around people that just don't believe nothing? They are so much fun to spend an afternoon with. Before your bill comes, you're using a plastic knife to cut your own wrist because it's been so depressing. I'm, I'm joking for some of those. I lost you there. Keep going. Come on. Come a little further. It's me talking. Come on. You know it's me. You never know what I'm going to say. But depressed people are, are that or they're just stuck on that place or in that place. So we are here today to encourage one another to say once again, get a hold of God's word. Turn off the TV. Turn off the news. I don't need to know what's happening in Australia. I don't need to know that. I don't need to know. But we're, we're so in this Oprah world. We just got to know. I want to know. I got enough in my own family. How about you? I don't need to know more junk that's happening in another nation. 
I don't need to know that. I need to know what God says about my life right now and what he wants to do in and through me and through this church, how he's using you to change lives. That's what I want to know. Many of you, because of the way you live and love God, you make me want to go to heaven. You make me want to know this Jesus because I've watched your life and it's incredible. And you're always an encouragement to Londa and I. Number seven, then shall we be with the Lord forever. So when this happens, and you can check out Luke 1, 32 through 33. After our Lord has returned for his saints, that's you and I, he will return with his saints. That's the second coming at the end of the tribulation. So what I want to know is how, how do we get to be with him if we're going through the tribulation or in the mid-trib? How did that happen? Well, I think I've been talking about how that happens. It's, it's called the rapture. He's coming for us. We're going to party for seven years. Woo! Isn't that wonderful? It says there's banquet tables, so clearly there's food. I mean, you don't sit at a banquet table, you know, and go, there, there's an empty plate here. It's an em- service. Excuse me, Archangel, could you see about our chicken? I ordered chicken. No, there's banquet tables. We're going to eat and we're going to fellowship. How about you? Isn't it a wonderful time when you get together with people that you know and love? I was going to say relatives, but we don't necessarily know and love them. (laughs) Right? I'm being real here. So, yeah, it's always wonderful. We kind of eat more even because we're just having a great time. That's the way it is going to be for seven years. It says the marriage of the lamb is happening. In other words, there's this banquet thing going on. There's this wonderful thing going on in heaven with Jesus. And then it talks of the seven years, the wrath of the lamb. I don't know if you've ever seen a lamb come at you like a killer lamb. (laughs) What an interesting saying, right? Well, that's why it's judgment. That's why, because the lamb is coming. This world will be judged. Justice will be, it will be. As we come to a close here, I want you to again realize that this is for your encouragement. This is for the believer to be encouraged. And for all of us, there's going to be millions of believers or professing believers that will be left. They will be left because they had a form of godliness. They spent more time. Some people spend more time on their yards than they do their soul or their car or their weekend or their cabin or whatever, which doesn't mean jack at the end of your life. What are we doing now? What is this moment now like? Young people, what is, you, what is this moment like for you? What is this moment for, for us, for me? I don't want to live this life just sort of. I want to live my life for God. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. I want to encourage you again to know the word. Get to know the word again. Fall in love with Jesus again. Whatever's, whatever your hang-up is, whatever the enemy is lying to you about, maybe it's your past or maybe it's some sin that you just keep committing and you don't want to. That's why we're here. Now, I got a big mouth up here, but you can tell me stuff that I'll take to my grave. We love you. We love the church that God 
has blessed us with here. And be encouraged today. Be aware and be prepared for the coming of the Lord is at hand. And he's made it right now so easy for us. With every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around. Maybe you're saying today, you know, I don't know this Jesus. I want to know this Jesus like you're talking about. And I don't want to be left behind. I want to go when he calls me. I want to go when he's in the air saying, come on, come up here. So if you're here today and you want to know and make a commitment for Jesus Christ, I'd like you to just slip your hand up wherever you are. Just put your hand up so that I can see it. I'd like to recognize you today. I won't embarrass you. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Anyone else? I'm going to ask you to do something else. I want you to just stand right up where you are and come down here and meet with me, will you? I'd like to have a miracle prayer with you. Come on. Come on. Come on. God bless you, my sister. Someone else? Is there anyone else? There may be someone else. See, this isn't a game to us. We've been serving the Lord for a long time. We've, we've done it right. Let me just talk about me. I've done it right and I've done it horribly wrong. But Jesus was always there for me. When I screwed up, he was always there. And many of you have been there for me. So this moment today is about Jesus again. It's about that moment. So if you want to repeat this prayer with me, please do that. You understand it's going to be too late. It's going to be too late. Now, I'll be talking about the tribulation next week. I'll be talking about the fact that people will come to Jesus literally by the millions during the tribulation. But they will die. They will be murdered and martyred for the cause of Christ. That's the difference between now and then. And I'm talking about scripture now. We'll be talking about the Lord and about what he says about this. This is not hard. Jesus has made it easy for us. We're in the dispensation of grace. This period of time is about grace. So just pray with me. Dear Father, thank you for today. I realize in your word that I have been a sinner. Please take my sin from me. Come into my heart. Live there. Be my Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I will serve you until my last breath. And I will be, be an encourager to my family and those that will listen. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you today. And if you guys would just go with this beautiful man right here. Amen. Now, if you've happened to turn tune in on this broadcast after the rapture, I want to encourage you to find this place. It's 35 and 13 in Burnsville. Because here there's literature here, and there probably is going to be people that did not make the rapture. You can meet with them. It's not too late for your soul. So you come here and there's, there will be steps that you can take to make it through this horrible time that you're in right now. Thank you for listening. Father, thank you for this moment. Go before our people in Jesus' name. Can we all stand, please. I want to say to everyone gathered here today, 
Thank you for taking your faith in God seriously. We have joy in our relationship with the Lord, but thank you for taking it seriously. It's important that you know what to say. Yes. Kids, youth, singles, marrieds, when your friends and your coworkers go, what in the world is going on? This is why we're giving these real messages so that you can go, you know, have you ever heard about the rapture? A lot of people will go, what are you talking about, the rapture? Well, you can say, well, this is what I know from the Bible. It's important. You don't have to, you don't have to be a Bible scholar, but you need to know these important timelines. I know Brent has some of those uh, handouts of the timeline will be for you at the door if you'd like to take that home with you so you can just study that out yourself. Now, a couple other things before we close. We'll sing a song. Uh, I want to tell you that every Wednesday night, we have ministry for the entire family, youth, students, kids, adults. This Wednesday, Pastor Scott will be zooming in from Bismarck, North Dakota, from our campus in Bismarck, North Dakota for the adults. What in the world is going on? We're studying again, just getting, getting the word into our everyday lives. And we have fun at the Father's house. Everybody say fun. fun. We're a family. So even if I'm, we're a family, you are my brother, you are my sister, and we're here to help you succeed in this life and for all eternity. Thank God for these commitments to the Lord. This is why we're alive. We're a church that believes in evangelism and outreach. We're thankful to gather here. We receive instruction. We receive encouragement. But then you are mobilized and activated to go. Everybody shout, go. go. That's why that bus out there is called the Go Bus. If you were not here last week on our sixth anniversary, I want to say thank you for six amazing years. I also want to say thank you to all of you who sent messages and gave me cards for my birthday. I I had a great birthday and I had a great birthday party and we got to celebrate this, but we celebrate life. Turn to somebody and say, celebrate life. Tell them celebrate life. We celebrate with great joy, with great joy. So let's sing this as we close. Here we go. Open up the heavens. We want to see you open up the floodgates, the mighty river. My heart feeling every part of our praise. Sing it one more time. Open up the heavens. We want to see you. Open up the floodgates. A mighty river flowing from your heart. Feeling every part of our praise. Now may the Lord keep you and may He make His face to shine upon and give you peace. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, we all say amen. God bless you. Have a